Welcome to Dress to Kill, your favorite fashion in action movie podcast. And welcome to our very first ever video episode. Yes, if you're listening to this on an audio platform, you already know, this is available on all the usual audio platforms. But this episode is also available on our brand new YouTube channel. So exciting. And if you are not watching the video and would like to, go to our Instagram at Dressed to Kill Pod and click the link in our bio. That will take you to our YouTube account where you can see this video. Merry Christmas and happy holidays. This is a very special bonus episode. We have done our usual format of the movie, No Time to Die. Finally, we're so excited. We finally were able to make this happen. We did have some tech issues, so please bear with us. We love learning and growing, but again, it was our first time on video together. We have so much to say about this movie, but in this episode, we really tried to stay focused just on the clothes. If you would like to see a video about what we have to say about the movie beyond the clothes, some questions we bring up on this episode, please DM us or comment on this video or comment on our Instagram. Anywhere that you can reach us, let us know that you want to see another episode about this movie because we'd love to make one, but we want to make sure we're not inundating you. We are so excited to bring you this bonus episode and even more excited to let you know that our season three is starting back up again in January. Very exciting stuff. We're clearly very excited. How many times have I said the word excited? <laughs> As usual, check us out on our Instagram at Dressed to Kill Pod and on Twitter at DTKPOD. And of course, please enjoy the episode. Sehr cool, oder? <laughs> Mega cool. <laughs> Mega cool. Okay. Welcome, everyone, to our very first official Dress to Kill video <laughs> episode. We have episodes we're putting on YouTube, so they will be video, but they don't have video attached to them. This will be the first we have shot video for the episode. Yes, because <laughs> we're here together. Yes. You're <laughs> because we're here together. And we've been trying to update to video for our season three, so we're working on it. Mm -hmm. I have to say, though, at the start of this, we've had a lot of technical difficulties standing in our way for a while. We're figuring it out as we go. Yeah, you'll I mean, see. It's, it's fun to figure out it's the challenges for sure. But... <laughs> but just so that we're both clear on how fun this is, you'll notice we're recording fully separately. My microphone... <laughs> My microphone <laughs> is a normal little mini microphone, but I have put on top of it uh, a, a little, uh, yeah, a little <laughs> um, uh, wind protector that I forgot the word for already um, that does not fit it. So it looks like a beautiful wig sliding around on top of the head of the microphone. <laughs> It's not a cute hat. It's and... a full on afro <laughs> yeah. of a mic baby. Exactly. And I feel like a great fun introductor person that's not a word uh like a host at mc a, a game show host that's yeah. what i feel like and i have my laptop here in front of me you guys <laughs> so you can see and my phone here so we can pull up pictures if we need to so that's what my devices are yeah we've got all the devices out elu is device queen and also the reason this microphone's happening is because this microphone the other one in my hand if you're not watching the video there are two uh just broke just out of the blue decided to explode from the inside. I know. So, <laughs> so we're making do this way. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Yes. Oh my god. I'm so excited. We're finally talking about No Time to Die because we were invited to the SF premiere. Mm -hmm. um, we got to see this uh, maybe like a week and a half, a week before, a little while before we it saw actually it came the, out in theaters. It was the same, the same exact time as the premiere in the UK. Yes, exactly. That's all so, I remember. Very special. And we're finally getting to talk about this. So let's dive in. Um, this is Kerry Fukunaga's debut Bond movie. I hope he directs more, I'm just going to say, because it was so beautiful. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> we, just, oh, by the way, we haven't really spoken much. We have not talked to each other about details other, yeah. because we wanted to wait for the pod. So, yeah, so this, this will be fresh. First time I'm <laughs> hearing what you really have to yeah. say. <laughs> oh my God, I thought he was two big thumbs up. Five star, ten stars? Ten, out of ten, ten out of ten stars so for his good. directing just, this film. I, th I thought. I thought so too. Because okay. for a Bond movie, which is so, um, you know, escapism visually, like you want style. 
he turned that up with the like colors of the film yes all of the, every, we'll get more turned into that up. if this was a radio <laughs> show i'd be pushing all the dials but, and it'd be like Baba, Bobby, he, he turned it up <laughs> well, well, yeah we'll get into the details more um so carrie fukunaga directed this the costume designer we have to mention she did an amazing job her name is sutirat on larlar do you want to attempt sutirat so, so she's thai and uh, by blood, she's American, but uh, her nationality, her she, name, we can assume is Thai. And Elma's asking me to pronounce it because <laughs> I grew up partly in Thailand. Yeah. My dad lived there, so I have some experience with Thai words. But man, I don't think I'm better at pronouncing this one though. Here. Sutirat. I don't know. Larlarb. Larlarb. Lalab. Lalab. That's how Sutirat. I would assume. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. My dialect would be Chiang Mai. If any of you guys can pronounce it, go ahead and send us a voice note. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so she actually worked on um, so many things. Okay, so um, what was it? Slumdog Millionaire. <gasps> Tran- yeah, Trance, which is um, another. Trance. Yes, it's very good. Danny Boyle movie. Ooh. Um, what I'm trying to say is she worked on a bunch of movies with Man, Danny Boyle. These are all British. Yes, and you know, do you remember before they started filming this movie, Danny Boyle was attached as director? <gasps> Yeah, so he must have brought her on, oh. brought his team, and she ended up sticking around, which is great because I think there were I don't you know I don't know when when creative um, differences happen who all stays and who yeah. all leaves with. So very cool that she got to stick around because um, the movie she was working on before. Oh, well, let's see, it was Steve Jobs. Yeah, big ones, <gasps> big movies, but they're not like block. Blustery? Do you know what I mean? They're not like action. Critical they're more Leah like acclaimed. Yeah, they're. <laughs> she worked a lot with Danny Boyle, very auteur director. Um, so that kind of films, and she, she worked on this movie. Did an amazing job. I thought the costumes were impeccable. On, yeah, on point. It, it was phenomenal. Okay. I thought she did a perfect job of what a costume designer is supposed to do, like capture the character. Like, all the things we mm-hmm. talk about in this podcast, I it's so much, it's flooding my brain-to-mouth yeah. connection. <laughs> yeah. Just not necessarily something that I would want to wear all the time, but something aspirational to every outfit for the audience in a fun way, mm-hmm. in, a, in a beautiful way, in yeah. something to admire kind of a way, but really embodying the character, embodying what they're yeah. doing, what they're feeling realistic too like it's not realistic yeah it's not too stylized where your things don't make sense yeah um um, it's really thoughtfully designed yes yeah Uh, so should we start with i just thought she did (laughs) damn good job so good now i want to rewatch her other stuff and just yeah like look at how she pays attention to these things girl big time yeah me too and yeah happy to discuss the stuff that she did in this movie yeah should we start with a cold open Yes. Okay. <laughs> it's a lot. I'm trying to remember which where where does the movie start and cold open end. I okay. Love how this movie starts with the flashback scene to a different time. We mm-hmm. never. I want to say we've never had that before. Really. In a Bond movie. Okay. There might be moments where he has a mem like. Um, there's like a, in On Her Majesty's Secret Service, he's looking at the window and there's like little montage flashbacks of like Diana Rigg and stuff. Okay. But really minimally done. Yes. Like this is the first time we have a full scene, especially cold open, where especially it's Especially like not in Bond in it. Yeah. Not Bond in it. And Hashtag not Bond in it. <laughs> not Bond in it. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. I don't have an answer. And you see. Yeah, I mean, everyone's seen this by now, right? So Yeah, the... this episode will have spoilers, so fully, in case you didn't fully, know from my saying it in the intro. Fully spoiled. The young Madeline that they picked, so cute. So cute, and so like, oh, it does look like her. It does look like her. It's such a pet peeve when they pick a kid who does not look like <laughs> the parents, or who yeah. does not look like the whatever. You're like, yeah. come on. And the French music, mm. and the setting, the scenery was gorgeous. Um, and I want to talk about in this scene what the villain is wearing. Yeah. Because it was terrifying when we first saw it in the theater. Um, you know, like you see sometimes in Bond movies, jump scare moments where a bird or a crow, like, you know, flies in front of James Bond's face. But Mm -hmm. this was a legit, like, horror movie jump scare where it actually (laughs) was terrifying. And, um, the mask that they chose was kind of like a typical, um, Japanese 
no kabuki? is that right <laughs> but, you know kabuki is actually a little different in style i think but oh. uh, but maybe it's within the same family gosh i should sure i should do the research but they called it a no mask n-o-h and it's supposed oh. to be expressionless okay so the a no face no face oh my gosh no okay face. any fans of studio ghibli please keep squealing <gasps> yes exactly okay yeah. yeah oh my god that the depth of Hayao Miyazaki just hit me now as well like is there so much more to that probably <laughs> which all of this uh, I guess was a nod to his Japanese and Russian heritage that the villain has which I didn't realize he was part Russian part Japanese same. when yeah they didn't get no that idea backstory I had no Rami. idea and also Rami Malek is not either <laughs> <laughs> I believe he's not either I thought he was I'm I hope I, I'm not offensive. I thought I had heard somewhere that he was like some amount of Hispanic or South American. That's so funny. I for some reason thought he was Egyptian. <laughs> okay, please. Can we just really quickly take a second to look up yeah. <laughs> what his nationality is? This is why I have oh my, my laptop here. I had heard about him through... I've never watched that that big show he's on. What is it? Mr. Robot. Robot. Mr. Robot. So good. I've never seen that, but I've heard so a lot of interviews good. about him because clearly he's a great actor and like I've seen him before. He's an amazing actor. But I heard about him before I saw him. Uh, <laughs> I remember being like, like what oh. he looks like. <laughs> yeah, when I actually saw him. Egyptian. Right? Immigrant parents. There you go, yes. Egyptian. Mm-hmm. Just straight up Egyptian. Just wow. Egyptian immigrant well parents. Well done. <laughs> First of all, I think I knew that from the Mr. Robot stuff. Okay, so wait, he's Egyptian, and just to be clear, he's Egyptian playing uh, Japanese Russian? Russian? Yes. And my. <laughs> How should we feel? Say, and his accent. My my friends who have a keen ear for this are like, his accent's Persian. <laughs> oh, no. So, this, it's a mix of references. I like sometimes when the the actor purposefully doesn't do like a very distinct accent, so it's a little bit ambiguous where he's from. Sure, okay. But this was just, to be honest, a little bit confusing. And the Japanese references come through with his clothes, sure. Yeah. The Russian, I guess the, the accent leans more Russian. Yeah, but you can't have his, his personality, his, his uh, ethnicity come through his clothes because... Yeah, I could. I often wear clothes that are not from my ethnicity. I, I agree. <laughs> but, but if Take we off that guess... dirndl. You're not German, <laughs> which is also kind of how the internet feels these days. Yes, so. exactly. Cultural <laughs> yeah, appropriation is a whole other conversation. Um, I don't. I really don't know how to feel about this. He's such a great actor. It felt like such a good cast and such a great choice to have him. But to find oh, out he was yeah. supposed to be some substantially Russian other. Races. Yeah, it's um. I'm not. I, I'm generally forgiving of these things, but <laughs> the internet has they, taught me how many people are missing out on roles that I'm sure are also fantastic actors who are of the right race. And I know. know. I wonder sometimes, Mixed especially feelings. a movie like this that was in production slash delayed for like two a years, while, yeah, a long time, and then how early the the actors and stuff are scouted. Yeah. How much of it is written? I'm sure like enough of it's written like it's a Russian Japanese villain. Okay, Rami Malik. <laughs> Why is it Russian Japanese? Why is it you know, I don't the know. Russian part I think is more location accurate to the character. Like doesn't he talk mm-hmm. about areas outside of Russia and stuff like mm-hmm, that? Mm-hmm. But the Japanese is maybe just national. So I or... the only thing I can feel like they wanted to inject into this is pulling um the Doctor No vibe from which a lot of people Hi, on the internet so are talking about, or before the movie came out, we're talking about, is Remy Malik's character supposed to be Dr. No? Like, yeah, is it the same I saw that all over yeah. the internet. Um, and they mm. definitely referenced him from the st- the way that he dresses, his yes. mixed heritage. So I yes. think they were just trying mm. to, um, you know, nod to that. An Easter eggy, fan pleasy, that kind of stuff. A little fan eggy f- dumpling. Yeah. <laughs> A quiche, if you will. Yeah. They left us a quiche. So back to the no mask. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I totally got sidetracked. I Context. L- it's Japanese. I love that um, because it's an expressionless mask. Yeah. It's all the subtlety in the way that he tilts his head, moves his body, the pauses that he takes yes. when he sees that Madeline's about to drown under the ice. Those subtleties, I think, uh, spoke volumes. Yeah. And a lot, I think, has uh, credit to Kerry Fukunaga is I think he's directed the actors well. Or at least I feel in this movie, 
a lot of the performances were really uh, incredible. Incredible, yeah. yeah. Like incredible. Madeline was very likely his work. Yeah, I. Th- it's I hard to know. If it's, it's hard like, to know if it's the actor, if it's the uh, writing, if it's the writing, if it's the director. Yeah. Like who? I mean, everybody has an influence, but I don't know. Everyone was quite good in a way that makes you think. Well, yeah, be a good directing of the actors, director. It, and it seems like they all just had a good time working on this movie. Like Daniel yeah. Craig is. Feel, feels very present in the film versus mm. like the last two yeah. movies where he's just always pouty and silent. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? And we and noticed how many connections the actors had. Like all these recent movies coming out were like, oh, yeah. oh man, they were in that together <laughs> we and they watched... were in that together yeah, and French they were in that together. Fetch. It's just like, damn, all these guys were already like tight before this. Yeah. Good chemistry all around. Yeah. 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 Okay. We got to talk about the clothes. We keep yes. talking about the clothes because I'm realizing... Yes. There's okay. So the thing, the, the thing we need to say here is this film we could talk about for many hours. Mm. And if you guys want to have an in-depth like breakdown, we would love to talk about that. Let us know. DM us. Yeah. Whatever. Let us know. Contact. Yeah. But that would have to be a separate episode. But it would have to be a separate episode. We're trying to really stay as focused as we can on the clothes. This is going to be about the clothes. So, yeah. Shall we do? Back to our format. Oh my god, it's been so long. I know. The first five looks we like best. I'm trying not to look at your list. Yeah. Let's go through chronologically in no particular favorite order. Attempted chronologically. Attempted chronologically. (laughs) (laughs) Doing our best. Okay, you go first. Okay. Um, Oh my gosh. My first outfit is in the beautiful Matera opening sequence of the Italy stuff. Yes, yes. Bond's outfit, which is a... Wait, it's the blue shirt and yes. the linen blazer. Yes. Um, and he has these like matching blue suspenders. This is the one he wears to get blown up. It's to get blown up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I just thought he looked great. It's class. Like, I, how many times have I picked a beige suit for Bond, a Daniel Craig Bond, as like my favorite? Probably a lot. Probably in every movie. Yeah. <laughs> so but he looks, I... he looks great. He looks great. Yeah. Yeah. He looks great. The Good blue choices. blue shirt. The blue. Yeah. Um, the blue shirt, the blue eyes, the beige suit, which is on point fit wise, better. I think it's it's uh, makes sense the fit of this yeah. cut. Like not he's on vacation. He's on vacation. Mode. Yeah, it's a little bit relaxed. Um, it's not tight armor, second skin like in the previous movies when he's on a mission. Mm-hmm. It looks comfortable, but pulled together. The shoes were great, and yeah, I love that whole opening scene. Yeah, thoughts on this outfit for James? Uh, I love it, actually. I felt like I personally felt that the coat, the coat, the the jacket was like, eh, mm-hmm. <laughs> not fitting well. Not not that it was fit, fitting poorly, but I just, I like a sharper fit. Okay. But yeah. you could feel that it was because of the character. Like, yeah. it was telling you about what's going on in the character's life. So, therefore, great. I love it. Yeah. I hear that. Yeah. I love that. Um, also that scene the very openings well one of the opening scenes where bond and uh leah sidu what is madeline her? madeline swan right i'm so bad with names that's what <laughs> i can never remember now <laughs> how bad i am with the names back the pod's back and i'm back with my yeah. name poor choicing <laughs> memory um that scene where they're driving together they're in the car together mm-hmm. every time that scene plays <laughs> elma elma just goes I also love it. I equally love it. But I'm loud. Do you know this about me? I'm loud and obnoxious. I'm and quiet. Elma's like the, the quietest little peanut. And she, every time that scene comes on, you just you can hear it. Oh, I think my eyes water every single time. Oh, I think you cried the first time. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 I did. I had that like, second that scene. This is like the fourth scene of the movie. And you're like, hey, I'm baby. It's like the fourth minute of the movie. <laughs> Um, but it's that. I mean, I agree. I was kind of crying the first. Everyone time. knows this moment when the um, on her majesty on her majesty's music cues in, and you hear it for the first time, and especially in the theater, you're like, "Oh my god, they did it! Oh my god, they did it!" <laughs> like, I love how much of it's the music for you too. Well, yeah, because there's so many little Easter egg things that are just quiches. Fanfare. They're dropping yes. quiches everywhere. The quiche dumplings. What? Quiche dumplings. <laughs> quiche dumplings left and right and, in this movie. <laughs> yes, and it's like so. It hits the core of like a bond fan of who's grew up with these movies you know it it feels like a person who loves the franchise made it which is great yes so yeah the music is is big (laughs) 
Uh, Your first outfit, tell me. Uh, I do not know the order. Okay, we can figure this out. Um, <laughs> I think it's going to be Paloma's dress. Okay. I know we're both going to have that on the yes, list. Yes, so like, ha- you might as well it has tackle to be it. on the list. Um, so that's my number two. So let's oh, okay. talk about it. <laughs> Chronologically, it's probably right. Yeah, I think so. Um, okay. Well, what is there to say? We got to she, see it early, so we've been everyone's been raving about it forever. It's a navy blue, Michael, low as fuck cut Michael dress. Michael Lasordo, Lasordo silk dress gown. Gown. It's floor length. Chef's kiss. Floor length dress. Huge ass slits. Thigh high. high slit. Yes. Gorgeous. Mm-hmm. She was perfect. Every time we watch this, we've seen it three, four, times. Four. Four, four times. Maybe four. I think might be four. Might be four. No, three times. We might saw be three, three might be four. Every time we see it, she's just steals the screen, the show, the whole movie. Mm-hmm. She looks fantastic. Her character is about my favorite Bond character I've ever seen. And perfect. I'm obsessed she's with her. Perfect. I need her to be in another movie. I identify with her more than probably any other Bond Aww. character. I feel like that's my girl. I love that. I love her. But also, to, to be honest surprising take here potentially i did i thought the dress was pretty in the promo images and everything ahead of time but i was like ah it just looks like so basic for like a bond girl and like the super low cut i'm kind of over it you've probably heard if you listen to our podcast i talk all the time about them repeating the same booby cuts and i'm like give me something fresh yeah and they're always trying to show boob show boob and not do a little bit of like a maybe like a side boob reveal or something else Mm -hmm. so part of me was like okay it's a cute dress, dress but it's yeah. like whatever mm-hmm. but when you see it in motion in action and you see the movements she makes within that dress it just hits the top of my list immediately i'm like never mind give it to me always <laughs> it's perfect it's perfect yeah. yeah in movement i mean oh like uh not only how the dress fans out but how she looks <laughs> how she looks with the guns and how like getting shit done she is yes. in that dress the peak of the silver shoes yes. i think the height of the heel was perfect um looks great when she's kicking and all that stuff and i actually have those shoes they're <gasps> really comfortable you, i think it's possible to do those things that really? she did like it's more realistic than like some I crazy stilettos stiletto. yeah yeah <laughs> yeah and she's I loved her. We need more yes. of her. She needs to come back. She needs to be a recurring character. Yes. I love her character so much. First of all, yeah. repla- not that I need Felix replaced, but like replace Felix. With her. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. Okay. Give us a different Felix or something. Because I don't want to you know, replace Felix is sad, but yeah. she needs to have her own recurring role. That's yeah, what yeah. I'm trying to say. Exactly. She needs to be a, 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 a one. Like, I'm okay. What if they are doing that? Oh That's my what God. I'm hoping. I wrote that down this last watch viewing i was like okay well what felix slider died jeffrey wright's gone he resurrects in westworld that's a separate movie <laughs> and then television and series. then um <laughs> paloma comes back as kind of as our angel coach. forever yes which she's the contact in cuba so i don't know she, she doesn't work directly with the cia i don't know how they'll make it work story-wise but they can figure it out he can have more missions in Cuba, or she can be traveling around the world. Whatever. She was just in Cuba. We don't know that she is. Is she Cuban for I, sure? I don't know about that, but I think that I mean, she's Felix Leiter was like, she's my contact here. Yeah. So, but yeah, it could be she was passing through. Who knows? I mean, they could go anywhere with that yeah, character. Yeah. She's. I mean, yeah. The character was so great that like she could have been wearing anything, and I would have chosen it for my look because that, the character was so incredible that like. You brought it to life for me. I need to now own it she, and wear it. Her and Daniel Craig, too, worked. Oh, they were so great. great. Yeah. Makes you want to watch Knives Out again. Yes, yes. Which they're in together. Which, because he worked with her in that, pulled her in for this. This why? Yeah. Or this I, why? I'm pretty sure it was, he was like, she's good. We she's need to get so her in. Good. So Also, good. I was saying that she plays this role Super Marilyn, like Super Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> yeah. And apparently she's also played Marilyn or playing mm-hmm. Yeah, in a movie that's coming out next year, I think. Yeah. Norma Jean. Love it. I know. Which, good eye picking that up because oh, I you. didn't make the connection, but I already knew that she was playing Mar- yeah. Marilyn in something else. She just, that's why I identify with that character. It's that like classic female Gemini vibe of like, 
I'm so fun and playful, whatever. But in fact, I'm so these other thing. Mm-hmm. Did that come across? <laughs> <laughs> and I loved in that scene when they're getting ready for the mission. He, and she, he's like, is this your room? It's the wine cellar. <laughs> it's the wine like, cellar. Every, and she's playing it so innocent. Like, what do yeah, you mean? Like, what, exactly. Like, I... Um, he was trying to flirt and all these things. And she was just like, oh, no, 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 no. Like, don't get the no, wrong I'm idea. Working. Like, I'm more, yeah. That part where he's like a, getting, have, where she's undressing him and he's giving her the look. And he makes a comment like, should we get to know each other? And she's like, oh, no, 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 no. Like, I, that's, that's not, not what, what I'm here for. <laughs> but she, she's like, oh, no, you can just get dressed. Yeah, yeah. I'll turn around. I think, go ahead. Like, I love that they could have taken this scene in many directions of like, okay, another love interest, but they made it clear that she's not into this older man. <laughs> she's here to do her first job or yeah. whatever that she's had three three weeks yeah. training on. And when she goes in and does Perfect. the like, she sneaks the thing in his ear, so she goes in as though she's going to like whisper to him or kiss him, yeah. you know? She's not playing into that. She's like honestly just doing it as a job. Mm-hmm love it love the uh lady gadget of the lipstick she turns it open and pops out the little ear gadget check Uh huh love yes this movie had good gadgets yeah like not over the top not too many but it had enough like perfect yeah like sci-fi-ish interesting stuff going on that i'm like yes this feels more like an old bond where you get the fun from the gadgets yes uh before we move on from this outfit Mm -hmm. i i have to mention the other couple things i love about it i love the makeup and the jewelry mm-hmm. like the hair is great but the makeup specifically and the jewelry makeup's love. perfect yeah i love that she has those garter things on just that it's just a style thing right it's I, been becoming more and more popular i was wondering because i'm like is there any practical use for it like did she have a weapon or something mm. maybe, maybe maybe there was a gun on the inner thigh but maybe. i i don't think so oh, but I maybe think just as a style thing they're like a thing mm-hmm. And the fact that this movie like predicted or this costume designer predicted how popular those are now, like they shot this, what, years ago, yeah. those were barely becoming it's a thing. Again. And currently in like lingerie style, just style across the board, that I shit love- is so popular. It's like a huge trend. I love those. I, I love, love them. them. I love them yes. too. If you want to see so Elma good. makes a version of those, <laughs> go to her Instagram and look at the video. I'm in. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Truly though. Great nod to Paloma over there. Oh, love, so I love, cute. I love, I love, I love, I love, I love. Yes, we're just and looking at pictures looking at of picture. her gorgeous outfit. <laughs> and what I love about the dress most mm-hmm. is the low cutness is like cool, cool, cool. Of course, you know, like I said, I already mm-hmm. my feeling about that. But it feels like the bottom is still. You're gonna. I'm gonna need your fashion terminology. Wh- what I would expect from a dress like this, especially with those two high slits, would be like a basics, just straight long panel in the front and in the back. Mm-hmm. But instead, it has like shape Full to it you know fullness. there's a fullness yeah. to the to the skirt part mm-hmm. which i'm like how do you even attach that to this kind of a top oh, yeah. without like breaking a dress like how do you do that logistically technically with skills it's so cool yes. and beautiful no it's beautifully it, like really like not simple as it seems yes exactly it's like how the simplest things to make it look seamless especially yes uh requires masterful skills yeah and good job michael Lasardo, because it's got to be at least three mm, three pieces of fullness in the front and then the front panel and then the back maybe four pieces somewhere and to make it that fullness cut on the bias seam together somewhere invisibly although i think i can guess where the seams are but yeah beautifully done so gorgeous very and it's something you gotta see in motion yeah because when you see her like flip spin around and like kick you're like oh my god the the skirt of that dress the skirt uh, and the weight of the fabric the weight, you can really yes, see yes, yes. that it's nice quality it's like silk. i'm obsessed with ballroom dancing because i love oh, to ballroom yes. dance and ballroom dance skirts are always made so they do that like they flip extra you know yeah. that that like weighted Flare, flippy thing at the yeah. bottom mm-hmm I felt like this did a normal, aka not specifically ballroom version of that when yeah. she was kicking and stuff, and that is not, that didn't just happen. Can we also talk about in that scene, whenever it cuts to her and doing action things, she there's like a lovely Spanish guitar or Latin <gasps> horn music. Is there? Yes. Oh my music girl, <laughs> it's so good and it makes me chuckle because it's like the serious, um, bombastic like brass sounds of an orchestra for Bond, and then you hear like the playful like trumpet, <sighs> you know, like the fast. I like, want to be her so badly. Yeah, it's perfect, and I love that scene how they have playful but 
badass. They take a moment to drink and toast in the middle. Like, so fun. Great. And she just catches right up with him when he does his, like, his charming playfulness. She's, Uh like, right there with him, like, "Uh (laughs) uh-huh. Like, he lands in that bar and he just is like, oh, no, I'm just taking a shot. And she's like, great, me too. Yeah. Like, she's just right there with him. Oh, we could go on. We could go on. Okay, back to the close. Love this scene. Love. Such a good scene. We we need to hurry up. (laughs) (laughs) so much time. Okay. I like Nomi's safari jacket look. The white safari jacket. Cute. That's what I'm picking. (laughs) Your your hesitant face. Um, I love that outfit. But more because it was a nod to the Roger Moore stuff. And I love safari stuff. And I love that they did like such a white. It's like cream or something. Mm -hmm, But it's not like a brown. Yeah. Love Mm -hmm. that. Um, I loved it. And it was striking on her. Mm -hmm. Like in an office setting where she's yes. the new 007 it's very significant and like you're in an office in the uk <laughs> yeah and i'm not not trying to offend at my six agents for not being stylish or whatever yeah. but like it's kind of a bold outfit to wear to the office i feel like that's uh, what i was gonna say like she's really like expressing herself yes. with that like the mm-hmm. other outfits sure she has a lot of expression in all of her clothes but they felt like they are also appropriate to the setting. And this one yeah. felt more like, oh, I'm claiming that I'm here. Yes. The confidence. Yes. Because the confidence. She, because she steps into this position where James Bond was 007 for 60 years. Not just anyone can <laughs> fill that role. You know? Exactly. Like you need and she comes at it with confidence. Mm-hmm. And I thought the great choice for the costume designer to pick something so bold for like her first, um, not her first meeting, but her first scenes in the office. Yeah. Uh-huh. I thought it was Perfect. love yeah i love that we got to see her in so many different settings too like wardrobe wise we can see her in an office setting we saw her out in the field we saw her yes. in diff- so many versions of being in, in the field combat, in beach town in the club like <laughs> in the club <laughs> all of it i had a thought about her after watching it the movie this many times uh-huh. i thought and this is maybe something just for the future it's not like a dig on this film but I love that they were showing off some of her unique skills as a double mm-hmm. O. Like, clearly we know what James Bond's skills are. And we have an idea of, like, what Felix Leiter's skills are. Although he's not double O in a, the MI6, mm. but he's in an American version of CIA, right? CIA, yeah. Um, I wanted to see a little more of what her unique skills in it are. And I felt like one of her unique skills that I really hope that they highlight is she was so good at, like, acting. Like, when she was pretending to be some Jamaican woman, mm-hmm. she she... She was acting all the way through. I felt like yeah. I've never seen Bond acting that much. I've never seen Felix Leiter acting that much in, in like Lyter, a spy yeah. setting. You know, like some spies need to be more yeah. undercover in that way or more in this way. And I felt like she was so skilled in that way, she like was. fully tricked. And like the second she dropped the act, it was like in a split second, dropped right back to normal. I just felt like, oh, man, yeah. that's a skill of hers as a double O. Yeah. Like, I hope that they take advantage of that and we get to see <laughs> that more. Yes. And Especially disguise, being a like, woman, like you can trick people so much more. Mm-hmm. I hope they push that. That'd be cool. Wait, are you talking about like for future? For future movies. Okay. Is she not going to be in future movies? I. That's a whole topic. That's a whole I just thing assumed. to discuss. I assumed no. Really? Mm-hmm. Well, okay. I assumed they didn't kill her, so they better deal with her. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I can tell you about what I assume for the oh future to come oh, wow. in Bond. This but is going to the... be exciting then. <laughs> yeah. When is the next one already? I know. Oh. We need more. We need more Paloma. <laughs> Paloma. Dude. Right now. She needs their spinoff. <laughs> Somebody write fan fiction. That's enough. Yeah. I'm, I'll read that. I'm, I'm I've never that. read fan fiction. I'll start reading it. <laughs> Three outfit is... Uh, this is so hard. Okay. Money Penny wears this red blouse with kind of. I know a, it. It's yeah. like a, a what should we call neck what do you with call a the, collar? A cowl, but cowl neck with a yeah, collar. With yeah, the but collar. silky. Yeah, silky but matte. And then, but it's all about the skirt. I didn't notice that until this time around watching. It's a full leather skirt, which I think it was black in the movie. In the photos that I'm looking at, it looks like brown. Yeah. It was black in the movie. It's a full leather pencil skirt. And I love a fucking pencil skirt. Oh, that's with, okay. With like anything, a leather She's pencil great skirt, with pencil skirts, a leather pencil skirt, and um, the silky blouse is not my shade of red, but it looks great for the office. <laughs> I'm very particular. Elmo's very yes. particular about her reds, and but wearing the leather skirt to the office, I'm like, you rock. So that's oh, yes. why I picked this one. Gorgeous. I love this look. Yeah, 
I love this look. I love how it stands out. I love that it's so in character. I wrote when we watched this the second time through, I wrote like character style breakdowns mm-hmm. for each character because I felt like they did it so well in this film telling us about their personalities Amazing. that I could write a full breakdown of each of them. And I want to make reels out of it. We'll see. If you follow <laughs> our Instagram, we might make some reels about it. Yeah. We or should. maybe we'll talk about it in a future episode because I feel like that would be a lot uh-huh. to stick in here. But this just perfectly fits into her her character, her personality, like some, it's something different, but it has the same qualities that she mm-hmm. always does. Yeah. And Ugh. I think her hair looks great in this movie. Me too. It's her look, she looks evolved. She looks great. Her character Absolutely. has also evolved. She's uh, like, there's moments where she's also questioning the judgment of M and doing things, yes. you know, taking things into her own hands and being proactive uh, by reaching yes. out to Bond, like come with me to Q's house. I love her character in this love yeah. she's really good this whole film was so well written mm-hmm. we were excited yeah. about phoebe waller bridge and we d- she did not disappoint like she you know it was oh. i think there's certain areas where you're like oh she must have you know you know like funny moments where you feel like she must have had a hand in yeah. the and i love that they punched it up in certain areas like the scientist guy for example letting him be a <laughs> like, little funny yeah <laughs> oh I, magnets i swear i feel like she had a hand in those areas for sure so good job phoebe waller bridge oh i think the endlessly good job team everyone worked seamlessly like if they switched directors clearly at some point Mm -hmm. well done yeah whatever they did it worked she was yeah so money pennies black leather pencil skirt red blouse is my third pick amen okay tell me yours my third pick is also money penny what which it's one? the blue pants with the white blouse with the the yellow or gold mm-hmm, collar the contrast trim yeah those blue pants are gorgeous yes they're like a bright dark blue they're like a yes a exactly or the like hue a... is a little darker but it's yeah. very bright but it's yes and the colors in this movie in terms of the clothes the color palette of the clothes is beautiful like a lot of so rich beautiful. blues and and yet each one really fits like, to the characters and mm-hmm. are so different like it's really only yeah. this character would wear these types of colors and only this character wear these types of colors but yeah. as, but when you zoom out to the palette of the film as a whole it really makes sense and it's cohesive yeah. and it's beautiful for the audience to watch they it's like fit in the same picture like in the so same collection or hard to do that whatever. yeah um but you see like a lot of mm, reddish but not quite red oh, except for madeline's dress there's like dark red burnt sienna Mm -hmm. in there even the color like the color correction of the film is it looks so good this is one of the most beautiful in my opinion Mm -hmm. bond films i've ever seen i think it might be the most visually beautiful like there's older movies where you're like wow like that's gorgeous or maybe it was so beautiful for the time exactly it was for the time so now with updated cameras updated everything updated aesthetics and abilities Mm-hmm. And like the way you can do tracking shots and, and, pe- drone. and just like the skill level of whoever worked on this, because mm-hmm. not every movie is made this beautifully, even yep. though it's technically possible. Mm-hmm. It's uh, visually my favorite. Yeah, I think this is my prettiest. favorite Bond movie. Period. Ooh, I'm calling it. Yay! I'm Colin Farrell. This is strong. Call. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love think this it. is it. Um, great money penny outfit. Yeah, I, I love her. I love her. I hope she stays. Yes. But I have some worries. Yeah. Okay. Can we also do another episode then about <laughs> we the might movie have stuff? To. Like, I damn, know, there's all these things. I don't even know these things. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So what's okay, your uh... my number four? Yeah. Oh gosh, this. Oh gosh. It was hard because it's an okay. I just have it, to say it, it, the one, whole thing two, was hard. Three, four, five. Oh, this is so hard. Okay. 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 <laughs> I'm gonna say Lashana Lynch is. It's similar to Money Penny's outfit in terms of it's a, a reddish blouse, but it was mm. the outfit she wears when she, her belt. and Madeline are. I call yeah, this the, the double, double belt, belt in my head. The wrapped belt thing, mm-hmm. um, with the beige trousers, that um, rust colored top and jacket combo mm-hmm. when they're going into where when Madeline and uh, Bond are gonna interrogate Blofeld mm-hmm. in that scene. And she has that little like side bow bits. It's not she, an actual bow, but it's like the pieces. She, you know yeah, I mean? exactly. The tie. The I think it's a, yeah, I it's don't like know a how that works, but. tie in the back and she just put the tails to the Cute. front. But it's a double-breasted longer shaped blazer. So yeah. like it's 
I, and I love it. It's a little bit masculine, but in this soft, interesting color. And, and the they, tailoring is soft, too. And they gave her so much curve with the under outfit so that curve, you're like, oh. So curve. So much curve. And she just looks like a boss. Like, yes. But really luxurious and stylish and, like, ready to work, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Some of her, she like, so the, like in unique style uh, details, she always does some kind of, like, hardware -y stuff. She loves mm -hmm. belts and she loves necklines. To yeah. be like unique and special, and yeah, I felt like right. so well executed in this. The Jamaica neckline, mm -hmm. yeah, good points, good call outs, but yes, hardware for sure. She mm -hmm. likes that. Oh, oh beautiful, yeah. yeah. I thought it was so perfect for her, and how unique. Like, this is what I'm what I was talking about in the past Bond films. They kept giving us stuff where it's like, okay, I get that that fits the character to a degree, and that's like a thing to wear, but like, this is a James Bond film, mm -hmm. it's about the fashion as much as anything. Yeah. Can you give us something more interesting? Like, we've seen t shirts before, <laughs> yeah. is how I felt in a we've lot of past films, and like, before. this is what I'm talking about. Yes, show yeah. us like a businesswoman that is something I haven't seen before. And, um, Lashana Lynch's character, when you talk about unique, her wardrobe yes. is the most unique. I, in I terms feel like of... Money Pennies in this one steps up and gets really unique too. I feel like everybody steps it up and gives me something I haven't seen before that is of the style yes. I've seen before. Um, totally, yeah. Um, but I mean more like in within her character, she mm. wears a lot more diverse styles true, of true, I, true, clothing true, items. True, true, true. And that's because she has you know what? to be so many places. I think true. I don't know if now that I think about other characters. Definitely okay, compared to we'll talk about it. Yeah, I wanna... Swan. Yeah, exactly. That's the biggest Madeline one Swan I'm thinking Swan is like about. such a repeat offender, but in a such like a classic character way where I'm like, I know you're a Virgo or like, whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, she's a mom. She's got her work. She has like, she's yeah, but she was probably busy she lady. Was a mom. I feel like she's always been a, this is what I like to wear. So this is what I wear. In like she's a Doug funny, color. you know? <laughs> And people in real life are Doug Funnies. Yeah, so I love that sense. there's someone here. I know. I, and I it still feels like that. variety for the audience. Yeah. But you see how, like, for her, she's a Doug Funny. <laughs> you open her closet and it's like, how oh, listen. Yeah. Oh, and there's the same, one corner same length. where there's the red dress. Yes, exactly. <laughs> for the vacation. Extra fun. For yeah. extra fun. Yeah. But yeah, it's always that same sleeve length. Mm hmm You know, pretty much. Never shows cleavage. Always keeps it tucked in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, black or white with the occasional red well she does neutral colors ne too. yeah neutral yeah I she know. just sticks to the basic colors like you wouldn't see her in like orange you wouldn't see her in this color i'm wearing no. or this color you're wearing she does like no. basics like the yeah like desaturated versions the like of. color <laughs> basics which are like red white navy black you know. and beige yes yeah i was gonna say yeah. color basics and neutral basics which yes I would have, but you know yeah all of the above that, yeah like an um, off white maybe, but that's maybe, as much as we're yeah, gonna yeah, see. Yeah, the off white, <laughs> the off white knit dress, for yeah. example. Okay, or the off white. Okay, we'll loves get a knit, to simple, other simple jewelry. Always an earring. <laughs> I'm jumping ahead with my number four, and it is Safin's coat in the very last scene. His like or his full look, but like the coat's what stands out. His like Asian yes. inspired. Uh, now we know Japanese inspired coat look yes look. i mean it's impeccably tailored it's I, so cool this is also my la wait number five so this yes. is your five yes okay. this is my number five so we're talking mm. about this it's so cool it's that perfect color of indigo like when you think about japanese denim or like like oh, i didn't even think about the color in that way yes it is yes and because the thing about the blue the significance in blue and japanese like clothing for example and um, do you know like shibori dyeing technique, which is like the Japanese version of tie dye? I know about one percent off the top about that. So, I've heard it. it. It's I think it was just blue was like the easiest to get or most available color. You know, yeah. like in history yes. of colors, Classic. blue is yeah. So they did a lot of tie dye in Japanese culture, which is called shibori, where you tie knots all specifically and yeah. make beautiful patterns. And that it's, stuff was coming back big like three years ago, mm -hmm. was it? There was like a big trend of it in Asia, especially. There was a big oh yeah yeah. I was there in Thailand and I was like, ooh, look at these like cheap knockoff versions. I was so, <laughs> yeah. but then they didn't fit that well. <laughs> anyway, and it's, it's I, just a huge admir admirer. It's, yeah, it's something part of the Japanese heritage and culture, yeah. you know? So it's cool that they chose that specific type of blue that is reminiscent of that. Yeah. Like, I think it's definitely like, what else, what other color could you have gone with? This is the perfect color. Yeah. Um, and yes, we now learn that he is half Japanese. So. <laughs> I guess it makes sense to dress him in his half Japanese heritage. I guess so. Um, 
but you know it looks like it was definitely a modern modern cut the first thing i called it was the safin yukata which is a japanese a men's version of like a kimono or like a basic kimono okay kind of like yukata yeah yukata 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 yeah <laughs> <laughs> kind of sounds like a question. You got that? You got that? You got that? <laughs> you got that? Um, <laughs> and and um, the costume designer said they, when they were designing these characters, they pulled all the, they made libraries for each character, pulling oh. references. I Dude, love We read an research. interview. It's a Vogue interview, yes. right? Yeah. Everyone read this interview. We'll post it in, in our stories. Yeah. We'll do our best Ooh. to share it out we'll there. We'll share it. Yeah. Such we'll a cool in interview. A link in the notes. Um, yeah. In the description. With the costume designer. Yes. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Link yeah. in the description. Of course, we'll do that. Yeah. And she, they, she said how they did all the research of the old Bond villains and how they all had high neck collars and minimal aesthetics. So they carried that through with this movie. Mm -hmm. um, I think he's super nods back to dr no style big um, nods the big Asian nods brothers yeah. <laughs> um so i thought he looked impeccable i think also when he steps into madeline swan's office for the first time oh yeah yeah like very interesting what he's wearing like yeah. if you just saw him on the street you're like what is it that you're wearing is it a jacket <laughs> a coat a shirt like in a positive in way a po like, you're like i need it, to i need more? to learn more yeah, yeah. um come over here person in I, I love that. Yeah. I touches. Love. I love I love just Asian influence in Western clothes because we so much go toward the like, we'll make it more European and it's like that's just the sure. same. Yeah. It's lovely, but it's just the same. But what I feel like the only way to really have some like different, distinct, unique mm -hmm. shapes added in is when we mix Western and Eastern. Yeah. So I just... love it when they put together like Make, those two sides yeah. and make something make a baby <laughs> yes it's the mixing of cultures you're yes. pulling references from all these different cultures yes. and yeah it looks great they always go for the asian influence and the villain outfits but it works <laughs> i know it's a little repetitive i in like that way it though for, yeah for serious like also i don't know much about like russian clothing influence like mm. we could have some of that i mean i know about like russian not. during the cold war clothing mm -hmm. influence mm -hmm. because of course we've gone there sure. a lot in cinema yeah that actually... <laughs> but i don't know like what is classic russian cultural clothing influence like that'd be cool that would be that would it's gonna be close cool. to asian that I would bet. be cool yeah or would it well i think it's yeah the north asia like decoratedness the fur linings yeah, yeah, yeah. the hats like i think there is a lot of like traditionally russian stuff i was gonna say that you could have pulled into this but depending on like the set like um where was the location that exactly. he was at and all those things what, what he was wearing in the movie makes perfect sense yeah <laughs> even in the very beginning i feel like mm. i don't know that i don't I don't know that he'd wear a super fancy thing to go and do that. And it would also kind of reveal who he is. He's wearing a mask for a reason. Like, yeah, you probably want to be yeah. dressed a little bit more neutrally. Yeah, yeah. And for the climate, you, you know, there aren't that many styles of dense coat. I, I don't know. I felt like it was really appropriate then, too. Very appropriate. I feel like it would have been weird if he showed up in, like, a really unique Asian-inspired like furry thing yeah i've been like uh i i agree with that but little details because you know the bond team yeah the team who makes bond they're so good at subtlety they don't want to yes. take things over the top or look too comic-y they're very attentive about that and yes. they're thinking about the longevity the longevity of these movies and that's something right? we love so much about them because so many franchises like this especially they've been around for so long have just become like cartoons yeah i know <laughs> which is cool but it's nice to have one that isn't yes this is the one that's based in reality more yeah. so yes and it's yeah i think the style is just enough there not over the top perfect for the character it was beautifully designed my five is James Bond's outfit in the final scene. Good call. It's not... Tell me why. It's not my number one most favorite, like, beautiful mm -hmm. looking outfit. I think it's great. What I love about it is how realistic it is. I love that he he's wearing the same clothes for, like, two straight days. <laughs> and you never see that in a Bond movie. But it is chronologically what needs to be happening. It's not like he gets to the villain's lair and he's like, now it's time to change. Like, every other movie. Which is like, okay. But, like, you're just saying that so we can see the outfit and I can tell. Like, sneak it in so I can't tell that's what you're doing if you need to do that. 
I know in the Roger Moore eras, you just had uh, rip off pants and uh, he's in a new outfit. Or you go to the villain's lair and they're like, I've laid out an outfit outfit for you. you. And you're like, no, you fucking haven't. You just wanted the costume to change on the character. Damn, I love when they do that. I mean, in the cartoony way, it's fun. But like that that type of thing keeps happening. You're like, okay, come on. Yeah. But with him, they found a way to keep it interesting outfit wise by changing his outfit. But in a way that made sense, which is just that he was in a cold ass place wearing layers not to mention he's wearing his appropriate layers for like being on the job and he's slowly taking them off out of necessity Mm -hmm. through what he's doing and it's not like he takes them off so that he's like stripped and naked yeah which is another old trope but he takes them off because like great now this thing's ripped or has this problem or whatever so this is off or now this you know what i mean now i'm sweaty and it's hot and i can't move any any of those reasons like layer to layer to layer so you get to have like as an audience member the interesting like shifting of outfit Uh and you can see like the undershirt he wakes up in that like that is fucking cool (laughs) yeah it's cool he really started his day in that and then they had to leave all of a sudden Mm -hmm. this shit happens they're like oh my god let's go and he just like grabs a thing, yes. puts it on whatever, go like, and it just, it's so, it's so real. And I love that it's not like a perfectly collared shirt because he was not waking up from sleeping in a perfectly <laughs> collared shirt. I know. Or like, let's say, yeah. I don't know if he was exactly sleeping in it, but like the first thing he puts on when he steps out of the bed is not yeah. going to be a collared shirt. Yeah. yeah. My dude. Yeah. No. I, I love all those pieces. Totally agree. And I, I totally was like agree. over suspenders until they brought it back in this movie. And I don't like love them now, but I'm like, I see them working for someone yes, to wear. I know it fits. It fits. Um, and he's got multiple suspenders. They yeah, all look that's good. what I'm saying. And yeah. that's what makes it fit because yeah. it's not just like, and in this outfit, he's wearing a suspender. It's yeah, like, no, it's like, he wears suspenders he when yep. he wears suspenders. Yeah, exactly. Ugh. Um, I, I love that outfit. I um I this the is the one teddy bear I'm sticking out of the suspender I'll never forget it. what a Me visual too. that they created yeah. with that like I'll never forget that image same that Thank image you. could be a pin for and I see it the importance of that because it's so perfect Are you gonna so cry sweet. I might cry um I love that, that like a threat. I didn't mean to cry <laughs> <laughs> you gonna cry <laughs> you gonna cry about it sorry (laughs) i love that he is getting his shit done but still has time to get that thing for his daughter he puts it in his strap um and he's still uh, and then he has the final fight scene with safin while he's still carrying that you know and what the fuck james bond has a daughter (laughs) meet my family (laughs) i love that (laughs) like i i think we need to do a second episode on this because like i have so many questions for you as someone who is newer to the franchise just about that alone yeah crazy what i (laughs) is crazy okay i have two things to say at the end and they needed it they needed what (laughs) ate my mic cord they needed to start giving us some new stuff and they were bold and made some moves extremely bold (laughs) extremely bold they were bold to have James Bond get married in 1969, but that was still early in the franchise, and they were still figuring things out, I feel. I, well, formula was set. It was unusual. But They've been this bold here. many years later, to do something so bold, it needed to be done, though, at the some point. The bold like the, it was A lot of things needed to be done, yeah. and I feel like they kept just sitting on their asses being like, just well, same. we're just not going to quite make a decision, which Hollywood has been doing. Mm. Let's just so do another true. remake of the same thing. Let's just play the same episode. So let's true. just do the same show again. Yeah. And it's like, no, let's get some new con. Mm-hmm. Let's get some new talent that exists everywhere. Pull them together. Make some new moves. Give us a bold statement. Yeah. And they did. And it's the best ever. <laughs> yeah. I know. And she was so cute and mm. perfect for them to uh, like. Uh, I want to know how much it cost. Just to color correct her eyes to make oh them extra blue throughout the film. And his, What yeah. is just the money cost on that? I want the line <laughs> item have of that just figured out. James Bond's daughter. What is her name? Not Madeline. Um, Matilda. Matilda. What is James? What is Mat- the line item cost of ma- bluening Matilda's <laughs> eyes throughout the film? The bluening of Matilda's eyes. $10,000. Another word I made up. You're per welcome. <laughs> Put it in the dictionary. <laughs> The blue winning. Okay, that, I think we talked about all our outfits. Yeah. Oh, wait, there was something, the costume designer, sh- that was her favorite outfit. Oh, yes. That Thanks last for one. remembering. Yeah. Is there a reason? Do we she said, yes. Take a quote? There were, no. actually, there, um, there was reasons. It was because 
Do you want me to read the quote? Yes, please read the quote. Okay. His final outfit alludes to his military training rather than his ladies man persona. Daniel put it on immediately and loved it, says the costume designer. If I had to pick a favorite, that might be it, as that's what it, he leaves the film in, and it had meaning on multiple levels. Yep. I found a vintage British commando jumper from the mid-40s. Um, then we remade it into navy blue and modernized the silhouette. That was perfect. Chef's yeah. kiss. So it was about the paramilitary feel, which I, I need to talk about Lashana Lynch's outfit also, besides him. Yes, 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 yes. Are we talking about honorable mentions now? Should we just go into it? A few honorables and then we keep and killing out. Yeah, mm-hmm. let's do it. Get so, honorable. Honorable mention, Lashana Lynch's outfit in that same scene. Her and Bond next to each other Ugh. in their combat uniforms. And like they're great. different enough. But they're, they're different enough. enough. Yeah. They're, they're their own people. Love it. Yeah. They're different enough, which is such a good point because it's like, okay, you're carrying these equipments. You're carrying these equipments. We're going to mm-hmm. need gear and, you know, accessories that mirror that. And so, when the guy's like, I could like exterminate your whole race and she's like <gasps> oh really really take a second <laughs> look at i'll killing you now <laughs> Lo- that that scene like the feeling of that scene sends a jolt through my body i can't watch it sitting down i'm like <sighs> <sighs> okay yeah. Ooh. Um, yes <laughs> she she's great <laughs> mm-hmm um okay what other honorable mentions uh i loved the her... squid game outfits squid that game. all the harvest the the acid the harvesters. harvesters are wearing yeah <laughs> i don't know yeah them the virus harvesters the virus harvest the heracles harvesters yeah. what if that's a job in the future um, i, it's I a hate job it the present must be a virus harvester it's i believe could that be. it, it is be. yeah oh my god i think it could be well hopefully that's not their only responsibility hopefully they can also like <laughs> do mm, a different job title <laughs> yeah. i don't know never mind maybe people love it i don't know uh yeah that was nice i like the you like again use of color that pop of yes. color yes cool really cool lighting throughout too yes mm-hmm. uh- yeah um lashana lynch had so many cool sunglasses and stuff like there's these like straight ones that she wears when she's picking him up in the aston martin yes there's need a ride need a ride that outfit yours yours is better than mine (laughs) (laughs) we needed to talk about her that like stringy macrame white yeah looks so good and she's wearing it with cargo pants and a fanny pack which two things i didn't think i liked anymore and it looks (laughs) fucking great and i have to admit i've been liking (laughs) i'm okay yeah i'm starting to like (laughs) bits of those but i I could see that in your style (laughs) no i loved how they put it together in this outfit yeah i agree she was going to the clothes just like properly for that for the role she's trying to play Mm -hmm. for that character yeah exactly like it's her Mm -hmm. Like know me, but it's also this woman Agent? character she's yeah. playing, a- like a- to that? trick him. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Bida, <laughs> both. Yeah, um, I actually liked Bond's jack long coat that he wears when he is um, in that, escaping like, green the woods. Foresty. Yes, yeah, that scene is gorgeous. That too. I love too because that's the same outfit he's wearing exactly. from earlier in the day. And he has this big old long trench coat that feels like it doesn't exactly go. Not that it doesn't go, but it's not your first choice to pair that with what he's wearing. Yeah. And it feels appropriately like, oh, he probably just grabbed that on the way out. Yes. Duh. Because that's what happened. Exactly. I thought that was great. Agreed. Um, What other? I mean, I really think this costume designer did uh, one of the most remarkable jobs I've seen in a film I don't know that someone could have done this better, and for that reason, I have mm. I could every single one is an honorable mention because it's so perfectly fits. Like yeah. she did her job top to toe, mm-hmm. fully. Brilliant. Do you want to start with which outfit you would like to keep? Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, I just can't. I know. I can't help it. Right. Right. <laughs> it's Paloma. Sure. Yes. I was gonna say, let's Come say on. it at the same time. Because <laughs> oh, of shit. course, I just said it at the same I, time. Yeah, <laughs> mine is also it. Paloma. Yeah, like what are you it's. Do? I tried to think: is there a second outfit I would pick? But oh, there's a lot else I pick, but like I over mean, hers. 
over no not over her once you've no. met her how yeah how could you choose it's, something other than that no it's perfect. don't you just need to be her i do yeah i am <laughs> maybe i hope uh, yes easy easy keep was easy mm-hmm. paloma's navy blue evening gown that's backless the back by the way is my favorite part of the dress cause, <gasps> really yeah because how thin those straps yes. are holding up such a probably have like decently heavy dress yes and how the little um, back where the straps attach go into peaks. Yeah. I love that little detail. It's like one tiny thing that makes it just a little, you know, like 30% more interesting than yeah. if it was straight or something. Chef's kiss. Mm, exactly. So we both agree okay. on the keep for once. Same no. keep. <laughs> Maybe not for, for once, for but rarely, for rare but times. Yes. Yes. Okay. And your kill? It's hard to pick a kill. Mm-hmm. But I'm just going to pick from what I, the first time watching through the movie, the only thing where I was like, oh. Tell me. Okay. Mm-hmm. And for that reason, I am picking Money Penny's like trench dress. The, uh-huh. I just, I loved that she was wearing like a trenchy top. And then it turned into be a long it dress. Really long. Really Weird long. Weird length. Yeah. And like it's safari and cool. Like the top half, like hips up. Ooh, I love it. Yeah. But then you go to the bottom this, and you're like, it was wait long. It is weird because I think it's longer than knee length, right? Like, oh, it was, yeah. it seemed to me longer to be than like T length. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. don't mean that offensively. I'm just being playful. <laughs> and I liked, again, like you said, waist up. It's the nod to the safari stuff. So cute. Which, you know, was like representative of other past Bond characters, but. And great. Yeah. Love the references. Although probably just the one on Lashana is enough because that was the better outfit. It was a statement. It was too. a statement. Yeah. And yeah. The other part of this I didn't like as much as like it didn't feel so money penny. I'm like, mm. mm-hmm. what? And it was in such at a, work. Like, she's wearing this pivotal scene too, where like where Bond dies. Yeah. You know, like know, there's a lot such of focus a big, on important scene. Yeah. I felt like is this supposed to be that she came in on her day off and she just like <sighs> so she looks like she was in a park. Maybe, but <laughs> money penny girl, don't wear that to a park. <laughs> like step it up one. yeah exactly step up your park gear um like what you wear to the office shouldn't be more glamorous and cool it depends on your office no. i guess but then what you wear depends on the park it depends on the park <laughs> <laughs> yeah i guess it depends i don't know i was gonna say what you wear on the weekend but yeah if you're just like chilling okay my kill is also money penny <gasps> but a different look it's not the one i chose is it no it's the outfit that she wears when she's visiting Q. Yeah. With um. Yeah. With a uh, Bond, and it's this weird stripe, like stripe coat. Yeah. The pants I think also have a pattern. They're also striped or checked, and the blouse very. It's like a pussy, a thin the, pussy blow bow, blouse, but not tied. Exactly. Which is you know she wears some stuff like that here and there, yeah. but it's already a color that's kind of repeated like a light like a, yeah like she's done the darker version of that in the red with like a you know it's just a not, sun. it's not the favorite of the colors she's done yeah so it's not as it's not neither here nor there like it's not really trying to be a thing but maybe that was also kind of the point this it looks like an outfit that like a lady m could wear could be lady m yeah. <laughs> um, it just looks more professional and less playful than she is. Not that she's always that playful. Yeah, but she's she gets a bit of cheek in there, and yeah. this just seems like dull. It, it, it does. It does feel. Uh, you know why? Because in other other times, I think she does just solid colors with um, a hint of pops, accents, which pops and peaks. Yes, which just pops, which makes it really stand out. Or like just solid blocks of color. Yeah. The red top, the or black like leather pop skirt, and the shape of it, like like with the cowl neck with the collar. Mm-hmm. Like that's a surprise. But this is like. A meh color. There's stripes on the coat. There's check stripes, something on the pant. It's like a weird in between of things, and doesn't look bold. And to be fair, like overall, I still think it works and it's cool. But we got to pick a kill. Yeah, it's not that great. Agreed. Yeah, yeah. I (laughs) we're looking at it closer. It just the the, like shapes. It looks cool like from afar because of the that pussy bow untied (laughs) thing. It just looks like a bunch of like Mm -hmm. texture, like where normally there wouldn't be as much texture going on. Mm -hmm. Sure. uh, In general, it would just be like, oh, what is that? And I like that she's not wearing. I like that the costume designer is conscious of not having her just wear like a black. 
mm-hmm. because in that dark scene at night, mm-hmm. she'd really be blending in too much, and we and she's the only woman in the scene, and she's serving a certain role. Like mm-hmm. I like that she has some kind of light going on, mm-hmm. not not to mean like good or bad, but like to just Color. to be able to see her yeah. and to have her make her own statement. This is important, yeah. It's... And I like that she's meshing with Q and in, in having a pattern, like having it be more. Mm-hmm stripey call because they're both on the same team they're like basically playing the same uh sidekicky yeah they're in the the same kind of role in this scene it's where they're at q's house at night and he's like cooking dinner yes so i i like all those things like i like there are all sorts of elements that tie them together sure so it's good i still don't i don't think it's a bad choice but i would i understand that's my kill yeah Yeah. (laughs) i understand you killing yours fully too um Money Penny had Money some great Penny hits, makes the but... weirdest choices. <laughs> yeah. But she always has, and it's funny because the costume designer said she really like backlogged everything they've done. No, yes, good point because that is what she specifically noted. The costume designer said about Money Penny's character being kind of way more diverse than any of the other characters. So weird, way more diverse than what Bond consistently yes. wears, than yes. what the villains consistently wear. Think she... about the eighties. Yes, the eighties. I was gonna say the... or maybe maybe don't. <laughs> don't think don't think about the future kill the frilly oh my god no yeah grandma's Penny hat a- do you ever get grandma's like inside the hat flowers, flowers? under the brim yes <laughs> don't think about that under the brim <laughs> so, flowers in my hat this is 2021 money penny she's gorgeous she's Doing stepped up but she's still a little quirky yes <laughs> i hope she remains that way it's yeah great. i yeah. like it it's, we can it's, spice somewhere exactly but overall brilliantly costumed yes, throughout yes um you know what's funny is i think neither of us picked a single madeline outfit in our Correct. list yeah but that i think makes is... sense <laughs> yeah yeah so that i her character's wardrobe was the least exciting for me she seems like a friend of mine like i know what she's gonna wear i could i could get her clothes for christmas and stuff like i get oh, it yeah and it's cute consistent. but she's it's just consistent. not me mm-hmm. yeah i feel the same way yeah um a lot of knit dresses yeah yeah uh half sleeves yep loves oh, her the other outfit i might have killed was her white jeans white top black belt yeah. outfit yeah if it didn't fit her character so appropriately i would have killed I know, it because i just thing. thought it was it ugly did. but mm-hmm. it does fit it does her fit. character so i guess it's like right <laughs> <laughs> yeah and so it's that. interesting it's different like it really gives it's not like well, it's blue different. jeans are in this season, so every character that wears jeans is going to wear this cut of blue jeans. Like I know. it's like each one has their own personality, and so like okay, I like that. Yeah, white jeans and a pretty chunky shoe, and a pretty. She pretty always does these belt. like ch- those chunky, like not too high, but a little bit chunky with a strap across somehow shoe. Uh huh. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Heel with a heel, yeah. low heel. Yeah. <laughs> That's Madeline Swan yeah. in black or white. <laughs> Uh, okay, yes. So that was our five looks. Our keep and kills. Any last last uh, mentions? Things you loved? The movie. The movie was great. The cast. <laughs> Things I loved were the movie. Was amazing. I feel like I would I would give it a pass on our representation pass mm-hmm. fail. Sure. But I am questioning now that I know about our villain who's meant to be. I know. I didn't know that until today. <laughs> yeah, me too. And I'm. I'm still giving it a pass, but I don't. I'm glad nobody's latching on to that because hopefully that'll just. Con- it's just part of like we're continuing to improve. Mm-hmm. Um, continuing to improve. It'd be interesting yes. to see how other people feel about that. Like if it actually bothers anyone. I, I don't think, know. It's, I don't know. I don't know either. I think most people don't aren't aware of where he's from, yep. mostly because of his accent. <laughs> and because Which Rami Mal R- Rami, Rami Malik Rami, Rami Malik. Rami- well, because Mr. Malik <laughs> Mr. <Malik>. is <laughs> so, I know people are offended by looking uh, racially ambiguous, that that's like a, oh. it's like a hot button term that's a, a, offensive. Oh, I'm so yes. sorry, but it is true that some people look more ambiguous mm-hmm. than others. I don't know what else to say, to call that. And he does look more racially ambiguous. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Although you're on the money, Egyptian, you got it, Egyptian. baby. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I. Oh, you know the other outfit mentions, huh? The henchman with the glass eye. Um, 
I thought his character was awesome. Oh, you know what? And I then, was going to kill one of those. Oh, really? Forgot. His outfits? Like the They're pattern so jacket 80s. in the beginning? Yeah. yeah. But he's but a villain, you know, so be ugly. I feel <laughs> that... I. Gosh, I don't even... I assumed he was Italian. This is another thing that we're like, okay. Um, yeah, is he, uh, is, is he? he? Yeah. But he just reminds me of, like, people you see, and my husband's from Italy, so I... So she's allowed to be I, racist. I'm, just <laughs> I'm totally kidding. No. So um, I, go, I go to Italy a, a good amount, but um, no, he just looks like one of those guys. The hometown style that, in Italy. It, there's something about no, like, his style that fits like, like someone this, who lives in Italy. This, Yeah, this city kid in Italy who uh, is kind of rebellious yeah. and like rides his bike and stuff and like wear, really makes weird outfit choices. Yeah. yeah. And the haircut even. Yeah. I thought it was on point. Yeah. So for that reason i thought it worked really well i hope nobody's finding that offensive i could i could say the same thing like i know the thai version of that <laughs> yeah from having grown up sure. in like smaller yeah. towns in in there as well yeah so you know just different places of different it's like what access to what stores you have etc and like who the big manufacturers are there that have excess of clothes so that people who aren't spending big mo money on clothes like this is the type of clothes they tend to buy like there's sure. so many little factors but there yeah. is a look to these place especially when yeah. it's like yeah and it's like his character was so like perfectly that yeah and i'm thinking also the kid who called on them oh yeah yeah, yeah. the kid mm -hmm. who called whoever on james bond when he went yeah. to the, the one that's leading him down the bridge yeah. right like his style is like a little bit more of an extreme version but in a like it's a film way mm. but totally same same kind of stuff it's uh, fits in the location yes. Very really well fits. and yeah, yeah. um yeah the characters throughout. but i do wonder because right. i thought that guy was russian <laughs> yeah, I know. Now I'm, now I'm very curious. He had some kind of accent. He did. Yeah. Again, a and little then I, hard to tell. I had thought it was Russian, but <laughs> it could have been. Maybe. It could have been quite a few things. You know, yeah. I'm also not sure that. Oh, and last note, obsession with the scientist. Oh, yeah. Dr. Obertron. Uh, Obert Obert Starts with an o. Valdo is his name, first name. What so, is it? Waldo with a, w, with a V. <laughs> so, Valdo. Valdo. Obertchev. Yeah. I think love yeah. him. He they so gave him good. some great cheek. I love it when he's I like, mean, "Yes, I like animals." <laughs> <laughs> I don't even remember how he said it. I just that remember that he said it. We burst out laughing. It's my favorite line of the movie. It was unexpected. Yes, that much. I like animals. <laughs> it was so unexpected in a Bond movie to have that. Fun. Much. It, you know, it was ex unexpected because of recently. It would have been yeah. expected in a, pr a previous oh, yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. It's yeah, like, That's what we've been asking for yes. is to bring yeah. in some of that play, and they brought it in. Ooh, I loved I it. And it he had good. such attitude. He did. I <laughs> loved him throughout the movie. He did so well. I was like, this guy. Yeah. More is. of this, please. I know. And I feel that's what I was saying earlier is I feel Phoebe Waller Bridge when she was brought in yes. to punch up the script. That's exactly what I, I thought you were yeah. referencing. Yeah. 100%. Her hand must have been on that, especially um, in the interaction between him and the other two scientists in the office room. She's yes. like, that's so unkind. Like, that <laughs> seems like something Phoebe Waller Bridge would say yes. in her shows and stuff. Yes, yes, so. yes. I was like, she ah. got that dark I love humor it. Yeah. <laughs> baked in. Yeah. So good. Um, last minute thoughts. I thought overall it was funnier than the last ones, which I yes. loved and wanted. The pacing yes. was great the first time around. The second time around, I did get a little bit sleepier in the last third act. You know what I was realizing this time, though, watching it, the third time watching it? I think it's because everything takes place indoors and it's like one location for a good chunk of time, yeah. for a very long time. You don't have much variety in like the exterior shots of like the forest and like mm. big visual things happening. I mean, there's big visual story things happening. I just think it's long. It's like it's five long. movies. It is long. I don't know what's going on with movies these days. They keep making them <laughs> so know. like either like, they're real short be three and you're like, long? okay, yeah, only an hour. Got it. That's <laughs> fine. Like 90, you know, not 90, uh, whatever. Like, yeah. Like a little, uh, yeah. minutes. Okay, sure. But then they're making some of them like two, uh, nearly three, three hours. hours. And you're like, it's listen, not necessary. in India, when they make movies that long, they give you an intermission. <laughs> If you're yeah. going to make a movie that long, I don't want to have to watch it in two chunks, but I let know. me because it's, it's uh, I'm tired. I agree. And I'm an old man. Not healthy to hold your pee for that long. It's not <laughs> healthy to hold your pee for that long. I did really enjoy it watching it in the comfort Every of home. Every time I stopped watching that movie, I've been like, I'm going to burst. Yeah. Wise, and I've been like, where's the rest of my coffee? 
I didn't bring enough into the theater. I'm sleepy and I have to pee. Yes. This movie is too long. I'm constantly <laughs> like the B storyline in my head outside of watching the movie is how much coffee's in my cup. Should I drink more of it now? It will give me more energy, but then I'll have to pee more. Or should I pee more? Or should I have more energy? Could I run out to pee? This is the, the thing running through. And I don't want to be distracted by that running through my mind in a movie. Mm, it's mm-hmm. a beautiful, incredible film. Yeah. But generally speaking, like what's up with movies being <laughs> so lengthy? <laughs> the last thing I want to mention about this movie <gasps> is how much the characters each had so much emotion, like Bond and his story. Like correct, I've never correct. seen him act so much. Like in a they Bond have movie. been missing humanity yes, in Bond movies that. for a long time, and like all the other movies are catching up and being really human, giving us emotion. Well-made films are giving us human emotion mm-hmm. lately. It's been popular for a while but the bond movies have been like that's cool we're gonna go ahead and put a suit on it and you're like i and that to me that is what has been the deterrent for enjoying the more recent bond movies Mm -hmm. why i didn't get into bond through them is because they've just been so artificial so inhuman and like (laughs) give me some real like why do i care about his story if he's not a human being yeah yeah like to have them all the and you're right all the characters yes. are so much more human in this. Yes. Like, Every single one had moments and feelings. Yes. Like, I've never seen Bond get so angry. Like, you see anger in, like, I'm going to punch or kill someone. But, like, anger, deep anger. Actual like, emotion. Emotional not, anger. Not, like, two-dimensional expression that has no real emotion in it, but actual emotion. Yes. This is what films are these days. And let's now it's nice to see Bond catch in. Mm-hmm to that catch up with that catch up with that yeah i should say that's what good movies are these days like we still have the movies that are like i'm swinging my knife at you and And it's like okay whatever but yeah yeah, but a bond movie is like a quality Mm -hmm. i'm expecting that quality i'm so glad they're getting back to that (laughs) yeah i sound like an ass but (laughs) uh, no but yes it's humanity and like we want to see that on screen Mm -hmm. we it's and it's been what something I've been to. annoyed at them for. So, like, mm-hmm. maybe you're hearing that <laughs> myself because <laughs> I have been low-key, like, you have the, all the budget in the world. You have all the ability in the world. You have all the talent in the world. In... Like, use it. Why are you not using it? I've been annoyed for a while that I'm like, uh, yeah. Uh, and they take time with their movies. Like, if you're going to take that much time with the take, movies. Make it good. Make get it good. Dig in. <laughs> yeah. Don't give us, like, I'm a sparkly lady in green on a horse. Bye. <laughs> you're like, what is this unicorn <laughs> shit? Like, can you give me emotion instead? Yeah. Like, we don't want him to feel, so let's just have a lady run through. <laughs> what? Oh my God. I'm sorry. You're exa- what? <laughs> we don't want him to feel. That's exactly it. Uh, no. Anyway, solved. All that. We got it. Humanity. <laughs> Figured out. Hope the next one keeps it. Yes. So that was beautiful. That's why oh, it felt I so much. Agree. You, so how many, many times do you cry in the first viewing? At least three. At least. Every time. On the spot. Sorry. We have all the time in the world came on. <laughs> the song i <laughs> which was probably 10 times <laughs> i think i cried twice but the second time was like at the end and mm-hmm. it was i cried through like a good 20 minutes and when the movie stopped playing i mm-hmm. just sat in the seat first of all both of us were just like uh, can't fully speechless and i just cried in the seat for a while i, I was like i can't no and no no i was waiting for that james bond will return at the end because it always says that and he just died but he's always gonna return <laughs> i was wondering i, I was like did something just happen? Yeah, right? <laughs> no. they See, I see it as cry, gonna, cry, cry. it's a clean slate now. They can do I whatever do with the next. Slate. Yeah. I, think I feel like this was their way of dumping Madeline Swan, to be honest, which is <laughs> terrible. <laughs> but a little true. A bit. It's, yeah, this movie solved a lot of problems in the story arc of Daniel Craig Bond. So Wait, do you, th- so you think Lashana Lynch is not going to be? I think so. You think that's it? I for think her? so. I I think that's my feeling because I feel like they can just start wherever they want. They yeah, well, but they I don't think they're gonna be like I, I think they're gonna keep making James Bond films. Is the thing I don't think it, it's gonna continue as 007 films particularly. Okay. It's more about the dude is still how the franchise is okay. to me. So that's what I'm thinking. And for you. Being so on the opposite end of assum- assuming that she's going to remain, did you think she was so that she would be the new 007 for good? Is no, that I just think thinking? she'll be okay. a reoccurring character. Okay. And like, okay. 
I, f- I feel like if I looked at the next three f- movies and they came out maybe one a year, mm-hmm. she'd maybe have small roles in one or two mm-hmm. and have at least a significant, have a significant role in at least one. I, I would assume that. that. And then maybe she fades out after like three movies or whatever. Okay. This was just my assumption. I love that too, but I don't know if they will. I just feel like they didn't wrap her up enough for, sure for her to be done. For like sure Like if that. she's done, to be honest, if it turns out she's done after this, Really? Like, because you didn't, you gave her so much in and you gave us so much, you stepped Hope. us into her so Hope. much and yeah. you did not step us out of her. Yeah. And I'm going to be like, mm. I mean, I don't know if you remember the very first episode, maybe not the very first, one of the first episodes that we recorded and we started talking about what we want to see in No Time to Die. Yes. One of the first things I said was, I hope they don't just give her the title and then give it right back to him, which <gasps> happened in this movie. And then, because yeah. she's like, uh, we will just reinstate double, uh, James Bond as 007 and then, you know, he gets his and status I like back. That her choice. And I think I, I would say this, if I was her, I'd make the same choice. So like, I hate it, but I love it. Yeah. But, but she is... needs to still be there and she'd be like, yeah, and I'm 006 i'm even better than you bitch (laughs) yeah like she i need her to still be around in order to not feel like that was just like i i totally feel you on that because it was a bold move to it was it was like a lot to go into one direction and then if they're just gonna throw it away yeah she's Hmm. beautiful because she doesn't know she's beautiful you know one direction i don't know that song Harry Styles has great taste, though. I like that. Um, <laughs> so if you guys want another episode on predictions for the future or Ooh, just our break other it down, thoughts. Which I already want. So, like, please yeah. vote for Elma because <laughs> I want to make that episode. Because yeah. uh, there is so much of my notes that we didn't even touch on. Oh, I, I, didn't, I literally didn't touch my notes. Have you, I looked at some photos on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> didn't touch them because i'm like i don't I, we need to limit ourselves I've to got, just the clothes yes wow <sighs> that was fun this was so fun i'm this so, so good i feel like uh i got a lot off my chest being able to finally talk to you about this <laughs> yes <laughs> and i agree thoughts. yeah now we can keep going we'll probably we watch this fully movie a talk more about times. it so we're gonna talk more yeah we are coming back with the season three Please continue to be excited. We love you. And let us know know if you want to see, hear a second part of this. Like, honestly, I know people always say that, but like, we really want to see if this is interesting to anyone because... Because there's so, like, there's so much for us to talk about because it's a current and new Bond movie that is happening in the present day. So it's a lot of references to, it's not like trying to think, what were they thinking in that time in the 70s? Like, what was going on? Yeah. This is a current thing. We yeah. have a lot to talk about, so let us know if you guys want another episode. And we're clearly also getting used to video. Like, this was a bit of an experiment. We're getting it more used to yeah. the workflow, so if you want video especially, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> leave it in the comments below. Yeah, leave and... it in the comments. And that's it. Well, thank you guys for listening. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed. Maybe thank you for watching. <laughs> what? Is it possible? <laughs> If you, you are new to this, go to our YouTube channel to see the video of this, this exact <laughs> podcast. Um, and check us out on Instagram, of course. That's where we live primarily, at Dress to Kill Pod. Yep. And on Twitter, at DTKPOD. Perfect. If you want to tweet at us, we're hanging out over there. And just thank you for coming thank by. You. Let us know what you thought about this. Please comment, yes. DM. So much to talk about now with everyone else. So yeah, we love please leave it. comments. Happy <laughs> what was your favorite outfit? Tell us. Yes. Right. Happy holidays in general. It's holiday season. Yes. Also. Okay. Bye, guys. Cheers. Thanks, guys. <laughs>